In this video, I want to show you the difference with the subtleties of each of the energies as we examine closely the Born-Haber cycle for these two ionic compounds. The first reaction we write is the formation reaction for the ionic compound. So I'm going to form calcium chloride, which is a solid. It's an ionic compound, it's a solid. And I'm going to make it from its elements. Well, the elemental form of calcium is Ca, calcium, the element, and it's a solid. Chlorine is one of our diatomic gases. So you need to remember which one of the elements are diatomic. This is the energy called the enthalpy of formation, and that's the symbol for that energy. And this is the overall reaction. The definition of enthalpy of formation is the energy to form, which I'm forming, one mole of the compound from its elements in its most stable form. Now on the other side of this line, I want to write for you the first reaction to form calcium oxide, Ca2O. We are going to form it, it is a solid, from its elements. Potassium is a metal, it is a solid, and I will need two of them to balance it that way. And the oxygen is diatomic, again, it's a gas, and I have to balancing it, making sure I only have one mole, so I need a one-half there. So this is the formation reaction by definition. We would call these the overall reactions. Okay, this is the overall reaction for both Born-Haber cycles. Then what we want to do in our Born-Haber cycle is turn our elements into just gaseous atoms. There's a reason for this that I will get into, but know that that's the next step. So I need to, on the left-hand side, turn calcium solid into calcium, the gas. To do that, we sublime it. That's the process of going from a solid directly to a gas. So this delta H is the delta H of sublimation. We're going to turn chlorine, the element, into chlorine, the atoms. That's just individual atoms like this. They need to be in the gas state. I have two chlorines in the molecule, so when I pull them into individual atoms, I'm going to have two moles of chlorine. The energy associated with this process is called bond association energy. I'll call it BE for short, for bond energy. I am breaking one mole of bonds because I have one mole of chlorine molecules. Each chlorine molecule, each mole has one bond in it. So I'm breaking one mole of bonds. Now let's see how that's different on the right hand side with K2O. With K2O, I'm going to again turn my potassium into potassium gas atoms. But I have to balance it all along the way. And there are two moles of gas here, so I'm going to need, I mean solid, so I need two moles of the gas. So when I do this process, it is going to be two times the enthalpy of sublimation. I have to double it because I have double the amount. The oxygen, again, it's a diatomic molecule that I need to break apart into just atoms. How many atoms would I have? Well, I have one half times two, or one mole of oxygen. I'm keeping it balanced all the way throughout. So then when I do this reaction, I am not breaking the bonds of a whole mole. I'm only breaking the bonds for a half a mole. So it's one half the bond energy of the O2 molecule. The next step is to turn these gaseous atoms into gaseous ions. So let's start on the left hand side. The charge of calcium in calcium chloride is Ca2+. The charge of chlorine becomes chloride Cl-. Now again, I have to keep it balanced everywhere along the way. Now the reason I had to get calcium into calcium gas is because the definition of this energy. To take a 
atom and turn it into an ion, you're pulling electrons off, and that's ionization energy. But ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron from a mole of gaseous atoms. So it had to be in the gas state in order for it to be this definition. Now, I'm not just pulling off one electron. I'm pulling off two electrons. So the enthalpy of this reaction is ionization energy 1 plus ionization energy 2. I'm pulling off two electrons. One from a calcium, and then the second one from the Ca plus to pull off the second one. As opposed to over here, I'm only putting on one electron. Putting on one electron per mole is electron affinity. But I'm putting it on two moles, so I have to do times two. Now, how is that different on the right-hand side with K2O? Well, the charge of potassium, I have to know what it's turning into. It's turning into K+. Plus. And if you're wondering how I know that, I know that by looking at the periodic table and knowing the charge of potassium. Now, I'm not just doing it for one mole. I have to keep it balanced throughout, so I'm doing it for two moles. So I'm pulling off the electron off of one mole starting with. That's IE1. I'm only pulling off one electron, so I'm not using IE2. I pull off one mole, but I'm doing it for two, I'm sorry, I pull off one electron, but I'm doing it for two moles. So I have to do this times two. Now what's the charge the oxygen is becoming? Oxygen is becoming two minus. Again, I'm looking at the periodic table for that. So I'm not just putting one electron on, I'm putting two electrons onto the oxygen. So I'm going to do electron affinity. Nah, I'm a little dyslexic there, aren't I? I want to do electron affinity 1, that's putting on the first electron, plus electron affinity 2, that's putting on the second electron. Now, once I have formed those ions, those ions are going to come together and turn into the ionic compound. That, by definition, is the Laddie synergy. And again, I'm dyslexic. Boy, struggling with my letters here. <laughs> Lattice energy. The energy released when you form a mole, there it is, a mole of an ionic compound from their ions. So we started with the ions and we turned them into a mole of ionic compounds. On the right hand side, same thing. I'm starting with our ions and I'm turning it into a mole of ionic compounds. That by definition is the lattice energy. So that's the Born-Haber cycle. Now we use that Born-Haber cycle always to calculate the lattice energy. The energy of the overall reaction okay, is equal to all of those other reactions combined together. So let me use um, a different color to trace this. So for the calcium chloride, the overall energy the delta H of formation is the overall energy. It would have to be each one of these, and I'll number them, okay? This energy plus this energy plus this energy plus this energy plus this energy, okay? So delta H of formation would be equal to the energy at step one, plus step two, plus step three, plus step four, plus step five. We're trying to solve for lattice energy, which is step five. So I will move each of these energies by subtracting them over to the other side and solve for delta H five. We would have to provide for you those energies. Your job is to make sure you are incorporating what is along each step when you plug those values in. Now if we look at the right hand side, we'll do a similar thing with it just to talk our way through it. The overall reaction is delta H of formation. So that would be the sum of all of the other energies have to be equal to this is, this value, plus this value, plus this value, plus this value, plus this value. 
So all of those combined, what's the first value? It is two times the heat of sublimation. What's the second value? It's one half the bond energy. What's the third value? Th two times the ionization energy. What's the fourth value? The electron affinity of one plus electron affinity for the second electron. What's number five? It's the lattice energy. We're trying to solve for lattice energy, so we put in all those values. We subtract them from the right to move them over to the left, doing our algebra, and we will be able to solve for the lattice energy. So hopefully this little video helps you trace all those different energies so that you'll know, do I double it, or am I adding some energies together? Am I keeping the bond energy or am I halving the bond energy? Is it just the heat of sublimation or is it two times the heat of sublimation? The key is to write each reaction correctly and making sure you're keeping it balanced along the way.